1,300 views and 22 dislikes. I have some explaining to do. This is Shep's Tech Reviews Cars, and today's video is going to be all about the truth behind our Volvo XC90. Now, before I get into this video, let me just give some background on this car before I get into the main video and the main topic of this entire video. In September of 2019, uh, my mom decided to pr get rid of her three-year-old 2017 Volvo XC90 for a brand new 2020 Volvo XC90. The dealer offered to pay $40,000 for her 2017 with over 40,000 miles on it, which was a very good deal and a very good offer. And she ended up picking up a Thunder Gray, uh, probably the best color and on any car, the a Thunder Gray Volvo XC90 T6 Momentum. Long story short, short this car was an, uh, nothing but problems, and I documented all those problems on the Shep's Tech Cars YouTube channel as well as my second channel, Shep's Tech Cars. Judging by the two big videos I made about my R Volvo XC90, the first one was on my first channel that I ever created, Shep's Tech Cars, where that video got over 70 1,500 views, and it is my second most popular video on that channel. The second video I've made was on this channel, Shep's Tech Reviews Cars, and that video has gotten 1,300 views, and I've gotten a lot of comments and very controversial comments saying that a lot of those, uh, a lot, that saying that I'm the problem, I'm the one that's breaking the car for views, etc., BS, 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 BS. So, in today's video, I'm going to be mainly talking about the truth behind that car. So, let's get really into this without, with the overview out of the way. Now, there are a lot of problems with that car. I'm not going to go in depth on uh, every single problem, but I have a couple of suspicions of why I think this car had so many problems. Now, a couple of the problems we had were our, were user errors. So, that was probably our someone in our family, like my mom, just didn't know how to properly use the car. So, those problems were not, I'm not counting those as problems. Other problems, though, or physical problems that just randomly happened on the car and which as well as just that car just had a lot of like bad luck. So what caused all of this luck that or what caused all of those problems? Well, a, a big part of all those problems has to do that in 2020 Volvo decided to facelift the car when usually when car companies facelift cars they have problems. Now, not always they actually have problems, but basically what happened was that f from 2000, Volvo redesigned the XC90 in 2016, and from then to 2019, they basically kept the same design, switched the packages, added new colors, added new rims, interiors, etc. But in 2020, marked a facelift. So they basically kind of changed a lot of the parts on the outside of the car, maybe the inside of the car as well. So Mainly, they kind of changed a lot of the parts on the car, and that resolves in problems th with the dealer and service not being trained on that specific car. Now, I'm not saying that's really what counted into all these problems, but um, it's a, definitely a big part of when you actually face up the car. Um, it Usually, the first year you face up the car, it has issues is what we basically found out. Now, we have actually no idea what actually caused that car to be so unreliable. We've owned three other Volvo XC90s prior to this one. The last one we owned was a 2017, the last one we owned before that one was a 2014, and the last one we owned before that one was a 2008. So, yes, uh, we owned a 2008 uh, uh, XC70, but two other XC90s after that, so Yes, we've owned prior Volvos before that, and my and my grandparents have been driving Volvos since 1976. So Volvo has really just ran through our family. But but that specific XC90 was just so unreliable, and 
I think it's because that it is a lemon. Now, I said this in my saying goodbye to our XC90 video because we actually currently don't own it anymore. We sold it, and that's what this entire video is all about. But, um, I thought the car was a lemon. When all the problems had, maybe at least five to six problems, I thought the car was definitely a lemon. And that's really why we sold it, is because we were, pump we were putting so much money into the car that, that Volvo wasn't covering under the warranty of the car. So, it was really just problems. Like, just straight problems. And on a new car, it really shouldn't have problems. Before we move on to another reason why we actually sold the car, and the, another, like, truth behind that entire car, before I move on to that, let me just say this. I, the car definitely had a lot of life in it. We I mean, could have kept it a lot longer, and I understand that. However... Even even if the car had all those problems and Volvo covered them under the warranty, it's just tiring going back to the dealership every single of a couple of months saying that this problem happened and having to actually get loaner car upon loaner car upon loaner car. Sure, that's actually nice from time to time, but you pay this a lot of money for a car that's mostly in the shop for a long time. Which is very, very, like, almost disappointing and kind of, well... So yes, it would have been possible to keep the car longer. And yes, it would have been a hassle to go back and forth from Volvo dealership back to our, uh, where we live. It's Volvo dealership back to where we live. So it really, we could have kept it longer. I understand that. But, I mean, my mom was really getting fed up with the idea be of having the car and just going um, there and back like almost every other month basically which was definitely very annoying and I can see why but the problems weren't the only reason why we sold the car the other reasons were that it didn't have some options on the car for example for, for 2020 model year Volvo decided to get rid of the front parking sensors and 360 cameras completely. No idea why, but those mo those were reserved for inscription and higher up momentums. So the momentum is the base trim level of the car. And those and those two things are pretty important when you're actually well driving the car. For such a big car, it is definitely important to have front parking sensors because the way the car is designed, you can't see over the hood and what's in front of you. So the front parking sensors are again very important. The 360 camera, big car, it's a huge car, right? It's a two over, I think it weighs over two tons, I bet. It's a big, it's a big heavy car. And the 360 camera is definitely very, very helpful because, well, you can see basically the surroundings all around you. The two, our 2017 had both of those things standard. And mainly the final reason or truth behind why we actually sold that car was because that um, I don't really think I made it clear in the videos, but, uh, we weren't actually planning on buying a new car at all, actually. Really, Volvo came to us to buy, uh, that, uh, car. And really, my mom's plan anyway was to keep that car for a year and then buy the car that she really, really, really wanted. And she finally found that time to buy it, the Audi Q8. And since we weren't using the third row seat anymore, we were way too big for it and that she just didn't really feel like she needed a heavy, clunky SUV anymore. Now we're basically all grown up. We're teenagers. We don't, we don't really carry, we don't have play dates. We don't carry friends in the car anymore. Uh, she really just found that time to say that I think it's the right time to get rid of it and buy the car and buy an Audi Q8, the car that she like really wanted in the long run. So yes, we should we should have kept the 2017 one way longer. It definitely would have been fine. Really, Volvo came to us to buy that 2020 because they needed more used cars in the lot. So I don't think I only made it clear. I thought people I bet th people thought that that was our first Volvo XC90 we that we bought. They didn't know about the whole forty thousand dollar trade in thing before it, and they assumed that we just sold the car at seven thousand miles in a year after for the problems which wasn't the only reason, and that's why I'm making this video. So, 
Uh, those, that is mainly the truth behind that car. If you guys did enjoy this video, I definitely did not want to make this video for a long time because uh, those two videos definitely have been uh, the most controversial videos on uh, this channel and my second channel, Shep's Tech Cars. So, I really do hope you guys do enjoy this. I hope this video cleared up a lot about everything about why we actually sold our XC90 and the, really the truth behind it because I never really actually explained everything about it. Now you know everything and um, now that begs the question, will I buy another Volvo again? I mean, in my future, probably, eventually, I, pro I definitely would want to own a Volvo, but will my mom own a Volvo ever, ever again? I mean, it's hard to tell. Volvos are great cars, don't get me wrong, but they just don't offer a lot for the price. Sure, they're very, very luxurious, but take for example, take for example the $70,000, $80,000 inscription model of the XC90. That starts, that goes for around 70 grand, and you can get a brand new Audi Q7 for around 60 grand, which is the price of a, of a base momentum, and you get a lot more ventilated seats, a 360 camera from parking sensors, and, um, a lot more but definitely Volvo is winning on the safety front I would have to say that is definitely a big positive to that so I will we ever own a Volvo in the future who knows I don't I don't see I don't really see it in our future but maybe eventually maybe we own one I have no idea but I hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did smash that like button comment, comment down below uh, what you guys think on this video I hope I did pretty well comment down below any new ideas and um, yeah, uh, see you guys next time. Peace.